Hey guys, welcome back to another impressions video and today I'm going to talk about this game right here Hyrule Warriors for the Nintendo Wii U a game that I've been eagerly anticipating uh, with uh, somewhat low expectations in the sense that I'm not very fond of the Dynasty Warriors or the Musou type of games and for those of you that are not familiar with the genre essentially uh, Musou games are action hack and slash games where you face uh, you face multiple enemies at the same time uh, and as you can imagine it gets pretty hectic because you have sometimes hundreds of enemies on the screen and you have to use different types of attack weak attacks strong attacks different types of weapons and you can you know switch characters and whatnot so essentially at its core Hyrule Warriors is a Dynasty Warrior games because after all this game is being developed by Koei Tecmo, which is a developer that uh, specializes in those games. And uh, it's a uh, Dynasty War games with a you know Zelda coat of paint, but let me tell you that the coat of paint is one of a very high quality because the fan service in this game is outstanding. And I do have to say that, uh, my again, my previous experience with the Dynasty War games hasn't been the best. And uh, I don't know if you guys watch my pickups videos or not, but uh, not too long ago I picked this game up, which is Warriors Orochi 3 for the Nintendo Wii U, which is another Muso game. And I did play this game for, I would say, two or three hours, and I had a lot of fun, actually. But uh, this game uh, suffered from the same fate, I guess, as the previous Dynasty War Warriors games that I played briefly on the PlayStation 2. And is that the combat gets very repetitive for me and um, you know I got sidetracked and I put this game down and I just never felt compelled to come back to this game um, so I was afraid that the same thing was gonna happen uh, with this game right here but uh, I have to say that being a huge Zelda fan as you can tell <laughs> um, it's my favorite series in gaming so I think that helped a lot and the fact that the game has this very high quality polished attached to it if you will and uh, as I mentioned early earlier the fan service it's out out of this world from beginning to end and um, especially if you like console Zelda games which it's uh, fine by me because I, pre I much prefer the uh, Zelda console games over the handheld ones and this game makes a lot of references uh, specifically to games like Ocarina of Time, Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess which are uh, games that I really really enjoyed and, and loved a lot and Ocarina of Time is my favorite game of all time by the way so um, that's that so l let me talk about the story a little bit um, the story it's uh, which Eiji Onuma when this game got announced Eiji Onuma came out the door and said the the story in this game is n in no way part of the Zelda timeline so uh, Zelda fans out there you don't have to scratch your head uh, trying to figure it out where this fits in the timeline. It's completely separate and irrelevant, uh, if you will. But uh, the story is actually pretty interesting in this game. I do have to say that it kept me uh, interested for throughout the duration of the of Legend mode, which is the, I guess, story mode. And uh, the story deals with this new villain called Sia, which um, the story tells of how Ganondorf was defeated and he was basic, basically broken up into four different fragments and in order for you know somebody somebody to prevent uh, awakening Ganondorf again those fragments were put in three different time periods uh, on different like you know uh, universes if you will and uh, so this new villain Sia she tries she opens portals to each uh, period of time in order to retrieve those pieces and resurrect Ganondorf. So it's up to uh, Link and the rest of the uh, Hyrule um, you know, army to prevent this from happening. And this is how the game ties all the universes together um, through, that, through that portal and time travel um, mechanic, if you will. And uh, this is how the characters from Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time all you know, mix and uh, get together, if you will. And uh, the, again, the story, um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but that's the, the, the basic of the story. And it, it's pretty interesting. Um, the, the, story mode, the, the story mode in this game is not very long. It takes about uh, between 10 to 15 hours, depending on your skill. 
I think it took me, I would say, around 12 hours to beat the game. And uh, I had a very, very good time. Now, uh, as far as the graphics in this game, I do have to say they're not the best by any means. Um, the game does run pretty smoothly. Uh, the frame rate is not very stable. The, the game drops in... The game has a lot of drops in frame rate, but... Uh, uh, it, it's to be expected because there's so many things going on at the same time on the screen there's hundreds of enemies and uh, uh, that that's to be expected and uh, the textures in the game are not very good the environments are really not very good they look like a early PS3 360 type of era uh, game uh, but the character models for you know the main character models such as Link, you know Zelda, and, and, and others are very detailed and you know they they look pretty good. Uh, the soundtrack in this game is freaking amazing. If you're a Zelda fan, there's fan service out the door as far as the soundtrack. Um, I personally liked it because it's a very like metal esque type of Zelda mixed tunes. Um, a lot of like metal riffs that uh, uh, add an aggressive tone to a lot of the classic uh, Zelda songs. So uh, if you're a fan of the, the Legend of Zelda, you know, songs or soundtrack uh, in the past, you're gonna see a lot of uh, modernized version of those songs, and they fit pretty well within the game. And uh, the soundtrack is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I I keep finding myself listening to the soundtrack at work. Uh, because it's uh, it's it's a very very high quality and very fun to listen to. Now the gameplay is where I'm gonna focus a little bit more because, again, uh, as I as I mentioned early in the video, I am not very fond of the Dynasty Warrior games because of their repetitive nature, and Hyrule Warriors falls in into that. I mean the 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 the, con the, the concepts are easy to grasp. You have a weak attack, a strong attack, and you also have um, like special power-ups that you can use by uh, using a meter that you have on top of the screen and then you have a super special um, uh, attack that you use by gathering the magic potions so you have to know how how to use them and where to use them um, you know when facing enemy uh, big boss battles and whatnot so uh, it's very easy to learn as far as the um, combat system and it's very fun to just defeat hundreds of enemies and usually what happens is the horde uh, of minions they're very easy to to you know clear out and beat they essentially don't attack you at all um, even if, if you play in hard difficulty the game is doesn't pose too much of a threat but the, the main challenge comes with the uh, the enemy like captains and uh, outpost captains and mini uh, or sub bosses and the main boss boss battles that's where that's where the difficulty uh, ramps up but uh, if you play this game on normal it shouldn't pose a threat and if you play it on hard it's uh, I played a little bit on hard I finished the game on normal and I, I did play a little bit on hard and that's where the boss battles are actually very challenging but uh, I did had a lot of fun you also have uh, there's also an, a strategic element to playing Dynasty Warrior or Hyrule Warriors in which you have to balance what um, what's going on on the screen you have a map that um, you have to keep an eye on at, uh, at, at all times and what you have to try and do is conquer different outposts throughout the maps and of course the game throws objectives at you uh, during each level for example protect you know Princess Zelda or protect these other guy or you know run to this place and do these so you have to balance the current objectives with uh, capturing outposts to uh, to gain ground on the map and at the same time at the same time you may be on the map at one point and one of your outposts is being attacked by the enemy uh, army so you have to run back and try and defend that outpost so uh, it can get very very hectic especially on the later levels um, but it's fun it's fun trying to manage your time and your, your priorities in, in the game and of course there is different unlockables and I guess collectibles if you will if you search good enough each level you, you can get hard pieces you can find uh, the golden skulltulas uh, which are unlocked uh, by doing certain uh, requirements in each level and uh, there's also uh, drops by the enemies so the stronger the enemies 
the better materials they drop and with materials you can craft badges which you can use to uh, make your warriors stronger um, so there's a I guess an RPG element if you will because you have to craft all these badges and create uh, create them to make your character stronger and your character the more kills you have and the more points you you get uh, your character levels up and gets stronger as well so and then also you can fuse weapons you can find different types of weapons scattered throughout the level sometimes when you kill an enemy or sometimes there are weapons hidden in treasure chests and then you can fuse weapons to create like you know a, an even stronger weapon and that's the cool part about the game each character in the game has its own fighting or combat style and the cool thing about Hyrule Warriors is that very early on in the game you already start unlocking new characters so you play obviously first as uh, as Link and but right away you unlock other characters such as Impa, uh, Princess Zelda, Sheik and then when the the story progresses and you go through the portals you unlock characters from those eras character, characters from Ocarina of Time like uh, Darunia or Princess Rudo uh, characters like Midna from Twilight Princess and, and so on so each character has its own fi fighting style or combat style which adds a little bit of variety and uh, you know you're free to switch characters um, uh, well there are some limitations depending on the story level but uh, if you if you play free mode or if you play the adventure mode sometimes you get a little bit more freedom and you can pick different characters with different combat styles and not only that but you can also have different weapons for each character so for example Link uh, you know his his default weapon is the sword and shield but you can also have a fire rod uh, which is a completely different weapon and it has completely different combos so uh, it adds a variety within each character uh, which makes for a very entertaining um, game and uh, again that Zelda coat of paint really adds a lot if you're a Zelda fan especially because all these items that you gather throughout the game are all related to you know the Legend of Zelda um, you know the Master Sword you know the Helian Shield uh, the Fire Rod um, the the bombs the boomerangs because you, you can also use other items and and things like that so the, the gameplay you know again it's a Dynasty War game but that that Zelda touch makes it very much, uh, very much more, I guess, interesting than uh, other Dynasty Warrior games. And uh, uh, I do have to say that after playing this game and after beating Legend Mode, I'm looking forward into going back and and giving this another shot because um, I have a better grasp of the mechanics, on the strategy, on how to approach the Muso games. So I'm definitely definitely looking forward into going back to Warriors Orochi 3 or any other Dynasty Warrior games and giving it, giving it a fair shake. Now, Legend Mode is not where the game ends. Um, there's also a very cool uh, adventure mode in which the presentation is awesome because if you guys are a fan of the original Legend of Zelda for the NES, you'll feel right at home because the, the menus and the loading screens and uh, the the overworld are all based on the sprites of the of, on the 8-bit sprites from the uh, NES Legend of Zelda game so for those of you old-school Zelda fans you're gonna feel right at home and adventure mode essentially repeats a lot of the levels and a lot of the you know sceneries from that you unlock through legend mode but it's very cool because there are many many challenge uh, levels if you will you have certain requirements for example the very first adventure mode level that you play you have to defeat 300 enemies under 10 minutes so you have these very specific requirements that once you uh, meet those requirements you beat the level and you are able to uh, move your um, you know 8-bit uh, sprite uh, in, in the overworld map and you can progress and you can branch into different paths and it's very interesting because if you are familiar with the original Legend of Zelda game there is a lot of secrets that that's that overworld maintained so if you remember where to put a bomb or where to um, where some of the hidden rooms are located uh, you'll find those exact same things in Hyrule Warriors so uh, adventure mode is very entertaining I, I just started that game mode but uh, I've heard that in order to 100% complete this game 
it takes over 200 hours which I'm not surprised because the amount of content in this game is pretty vast and because uh, you, you basically have to you have the option of leveling up, leveling up each character to level 99 and then you have to unlock all the combos you have to fully upgrade all the uh, badges in each character fully upgrade all the weapons and then adventure mode is vast when you look at the overworld map uh, each little square represents a different level and each level has a different type of difficulty and within each level there are collectibles that are not specifically part of the regular mission and then of course you have the legend mode which is a story mode which takes anywhere between 10 and 15 hours and there there's also a challenge mode which I'm not really sure what it entails I haven't really uh, played that game yet uh, but uh, again that's a different uh, game mode that's out there and I'm sure there's some kind of unlockable um, in, in that game mode as well uh, the game also has a some form of achievements or trophies if you will um, every time you meet a certain specific requirement um, you get a medal a bronze a silver or a gold medal and it automatically automatically gets posted to Miiverse so I guess you can say that <laughs> the I guess the Nintendo version of achievements right there so if you're interested in that there's also that added challenge of you know unlocking all the all the medals or trophies or whatever they are so overall Hyrule Warriors if you're a Dynasty Warrior fan you are gonna like this game um, I've read in different forums the because I, I was very curious on the opinion of fans uh, Dynasty Warrior fans that are not necessarily Zelda fans that bought this game and they all seem to agree that this is a very solid entry as a Dynasty Warrior game you know taking taking away that Zelda coat of paint I think the general consensus is that this is a very very solid Musou game um, now if you're a Zelda fan and don't partic particularly care about the Musou types of games get it you, I think you're gonna like it it's something different it's not your typical Zelda game where you have all these you know great dungeons and temples that you have to explore it doesn't have this serious uh, a serious storyline if you will but it's something different that it's very very enjoyable if you're a, a Zelda fan I think you're gonna feel right at home because there's so much fan service from the presentation to the soundtrack to the unlockables to the different characters that you can unlock I mean after all this is the only Zelda game that allows you to play as you know different characters such as you know Princess Zelda or Sheik or even Ganondorf when you when you unlock him I mean you can play as the evil man it's, uh, himself so it's pretty exciting because you know you get to explore all of these characters that you that you that you have seen in previous games and it, it and it's really fun and like I said before in the video each one has its own combat style and it makes up for a very very fun and enjoyable experience so if you're a Zelda fan highly recommend it get this game if you're a Dynasty Warrior fan that don't really and you don't really care about the Zelda uh, games or franchise still give this one a shot I mean again I've read comments of people that are that really enjoy this game so uh, I think either way it's a win-win Hyrule Warriors is a very solid game and uh, in my opinion a must-have if you have a Wii U system so that's it for now hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and thank you for watching